serious human rights issues that Pakistan faces. Violence in the name of honor. The problem of honor violence persists, not only in rural and tribal areas of Pakistan, but is sadly increasing in cities and among the urban communities as well. This year, we saw one of the most heinous incidences, a series of heinous incidences, where young women were torched and killed in different parts of the country. The country, the country witnessed in shock as the Jirga in Aptabad ordered the killing of a teenager, Ambreen, who was subsequently burnt to death. There were more horrifying cases to follow. A young girl of 16 years old was tossed to death by her own mother in Lahore, and a school teacher was burnt in Murray, and earlier in Jacobad, a young bride was killed by her husband on the wedding night. Indeed, equally shocking also was the case of Kadeen Baloch, the social media activist um, who was also killed in an honor killing. The common thread in all these brutal killings was the fact that the victims were all killed by their near and dear ones. Ordinary, ordinarily, relatives who perpetuate violence against women seek cultural and moral rationales in local honor values, in words like gherit and izzat. The challenge before us is to create systems of justice that will punish the violence and not seek out cultural, religious, or moral rationales. Th that is why this book is not only timely, but also so very important. Dr. Shah shows that these murders take place in the family, and relatives tend to get away with it because of the weaknesses in our homicide laws where relatives are given legal powers to either punish or forgive the offenders. Recent legal changes to amend these laws are positive, but not enough. Nearly three years ago, the Pakistan People's Party presented a law against honor crimes. As uh, Ms. Nafisa Shah mentioned, uh, uh, Sugra Imam, our senator, played a key role in this, and this has been an issue. Absolutely right that it is up to my generation to find the solutions. The problem is that, I, that we can't do it alone. We know how controversial, how dangerous this topic gets. But we can promise this, that we as the Pakistan People's Party have lost Shaheed Mohtarma Benazir Bhutto. And despite having a UN commission to investigate her assassination, we have not got justice. Now imagine if we cannot get justice for Shaheed Mohtarma Benazir Bhutto, imagine. How am I expected to get justice for every woman and child in Pakistan who suffers at the hands of violent men who believe that they've stepped out of their given roles? Well, we do so by making a commitment. By making a commitment that every woman, every child, every girl is the future Benazir Bhutto of Pakistan. And if every woman, every child, every girl is the future Benazir Bhutto of Pakistan, we have to make sure that what happened to Benazir Bhutto does not happen to this child, does not happen to this woman. In what, whatever name, whatever mask, whatever lie, they call it a suicide bombing, a domestic abuse case, a, whatever they call it. At the end of the day, it's violence, it's murder. They've murdered my mother, and they murder other people's mothers and other people's sisters. And we as Pakistanis, yes, it's an issue of gharit. Yes, it's an issue of izzat. 
that if we cannot protect our women, if we cannot protect, and I don't like saying it like that, but if we cannot protect the women and uh, the mothers, the sisters in our lives, then who can we protect? So let's channel it ourselves. Let's challenge the next generation. That if anyone dares to ha uh, harm, a, a harm a hair on our sister's heads, that we will take it a challenge to our honor, and we will take it a challenge to our is it, and we will not let them get away with it. And when I say that they cannot get away with it, that means that we won't just change our laws. That means we have to change hearts and we have to change minds. And we have to make sure that our brothers and our fathers and our relatives and the male members of our society know that not only will this not be tolerated, we will treat you as the pariah you deserve to be if you have harmed our sisters, our daughters, and our mothers. So the recent legal changes to amend these laws are positive, but as I try to emphasize, don't go far enough, and hopefully we will do too. I believe, as this book rightly argues, the criminals now hide behind the mask of honor to justify violence against women and girls. Let us be clear. There's no honor in killing. There's no honor in maiming. There's no honor in wounding, in injuring. They've murdered my mother, and they murder other people's mothers and other people's sisters. And we as Pakistanis, yes, it's an issue of gharit. Yes, it's an issue of izzat. That if we cannot protect our women, if we cannot protect, and I don't like saying it like that, but if we cannot protect the women and uh, the mothers, the sisters in our lives, then who can we protect? So let's channel it ourselves. Let's challenge the next generation. That if anyone dares to ha uh, harm, a, uh, harm a hair on our sisters' heads, that we will take it a challenge to our honor, and we will take it a challenge to our is it, and we will not let them get away with it. And when I say that they cannot get away with it, that means that we won't just change our laws. That means we have to change hearts and we have to change minds. And we have to make sure that our brothers and our fathers and our relatives and the male members of our society know that not only will this not be tolerated, we will treat you as the pariah you deserve to be if you have harmed our sisters, our daughters and our mothers. So the recent legal changes to amend these laws are positive. But as I try to emphasize, don't go far enough, and hopefully we will do too. I believe, as this book rightly argues, the criminals now hide behind the mask of honor to justify violence against women and girls. Let us be clear. There's no honor in killing. There's no honor in maiming. There's no honor in wounding, in injuring a woman. There's no honor in any crime. Laws of forgiveness, when used as weapons by the strong and wealthy, ought not to become instruments of injustice, most dishonorable and grave. Equal rights necessitates equal treatment by the law. Forgiveness laws cannot be permitted to create inequality. We should strive for a law that promises to deal with all murder equally. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> violence against women and girls must be combated through legal change that punishes violence, but at the same time rehabilitates the victims. Laws must create systems of protection for women and children. But the very first step has to be a firm resolve to end it. In a bold and positive step, the Sindh Provincial Assembly has recently adopted a resolution condemning violence against women and has demanded the government implement the laws passed. Sindh has also previously demonstrated similar resolve and passed two resolutions against honor crimes and called for the federal legislation to enact laws to, com to combat them. However, Resolutions must be backed by action. Laws are the starting point of any action as they set the framework. In the Sindh Assembly, several rights-based laws have been passed. As for instance, the Sindh Domestic Violence Act, 
the SIN Child Marriage Restraint Act, and implementation of the Protection Against Harassment of Women at the Workplace Act, with 2,300 inquiry committees formed thus far in the province. Two more legislations are under consideration, the SIN Abolition of Dowry Act and the SIN Acid Control and Acid Crime Prevention Act. Although this is very good progress, I am concerned, as all of you are, about the so slow pace of implementation of important laws in general. As chairman of the ruling Pakistan people of the ruling Pakistan People's Party of the province of Sindh, I have discussed ways and means through which laws can be better implemented, and I also require your help and support in this regard. I am told that the institutional mechanisms for addressing the gaps are also being strengthened in the province, including the Sindh Provincial Commission on the Status of Women and Women Protection Centers. These institutions also need to be driven by feminists and activists sitting among you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, no violence is endemic. It is rooted in inequalities, injustice, and discrimination. The world places us, the world places Pakistan at the very bottom when they rate our progress on bridging the gender gap and combating discriminatory policies. In a World Economic Forum report, Pakistan is placed at 143 out of 144 countries on this issue. So there's a long way to go. But it's also true that Pakistani women are among the bravest in the world. Of course I'll take my mother's name, Shaheed Motarma Benazir Bhutto, elected not only elected twice as Prime Minister of Pakistan, the youngest ever Prime Minister in the Muslim world, the first female Prime Minister in the Muslim world. Our young, inspirational Nobel Prize winner, Malala Yousafzai, who faced bullets but would not be deterred from pursuing an education. Or Shaheed Maryam Mukhtar, who died, died fighting, Mukhtaria, who died while f flying a fighter jet that shows that the women of Pakistan are brave on the battlefield, they're brave in leadership, and they're even brave while going to school. There are many examples of inspirational lives of great women and girls this country has produced. But was it easy for the women to be where they are? These women had resolve and extraordinary courage. They wanted to change things for themselves, their families, their communities, and other women. Here I quote from my mother's last book, Reconciliation, Islam, Democracy, and the West. It was in America, over milk and cookies at night in my dormitory, that we would discuss how we wanted more out of life than the traditional roles of wife and mother. We believed that women have the right to choose whether they want to live as a housemaker or seek careers. In those formative years in the West, I came to understand that the only limits on options for women in society are limits that we ourselves accept. I came to understand by rejecting the, cons the constraints of the past on what women can do today or become today, we can build a newer world not only for ourselves and our daughters, but also for our husbands and our sons. Just as democracy promotes moderation, gender equality promotes peace. I, I grew up with these very ideals. I grew up with these ideas of a world where the rich and the poor, women and men, Peers and Murids, Seths and Mazdoors, Zamindars and Haris all have access to equal opportunities for living better lives and no limits or conditions should be set on these basic rights. And these are the ide ideals and ideas I would like to promote in society through my party and through my politics and through my policies. Ladies and gentlemen, it is hard to speak of equal opportunity without acknowledging the scourge of terrorism, fear, and persistent violence 
On the political front, seriousness or lack thereof in the implementation of the National Action Programme and the resistance to reconstituting the Parliamentary National Security Committee, which makes up one of our four points and our four demands as the opposition party, as we challenge the government. But in the long term, this has to move beyond just a national action plan. Combating terror, the tactic as well as the ideology, requires not merely conventional warfare on the battlefield or an administrative action plan. We must rebuild our cultural and societal fabric to prevent extremists, divisive or violent ideologies from ripping us apart. To build our cultural infrastructure, women and men must be equal partners in development. Artists must perform. Writers must write. Musicians must be free to sing. And poets must continue to mesmerize us with their verses. I am, aware, I am aware that today in this auditorium are eminent writers, poets, thinkers, professors, social and political leaders, journalists and intellectuals. I would love to meet each and every one of you and to learn from you about your experiences and insights of today's Pakistan. As the head of a progressive party, I am proud of the fact that our party has always maintained strong ties with arts and culture. In Shaheed Zulfikar Ali Puto's time, this realization led to a creation of important institutions, such as the National Book Foundation, which was established by an act of parliament in 1972, and the National Council of Arts, which was established in 1973. Unfortunately, frequent attacks on the Pakistan People's Party led to a cleavage and our connection with artists and writers and thinkers weakened. I want to rebuild our relationship, recognize that no struggle for equal rights and justice can be delivered without the motiv motivational, inspirational resources and cultural archives you create. It is these resources that lead to good policies and, co and committed long-term action. The left as a movement for justice and equality requires constant feedback from artists, writers, thinkers and poets. I want to reach out to all of you to help me in a task of a cultural re revival of sorts that will create an inclusive, to tolerant and plural society but also a society that is strong, not just so in rhetoric, not just in words, but on physical action, on deliverable goods, on delivering services to the people in a transparent manner. Dr. Nafisa Shah's book and her launch of the book today can be the starting point of this interface between thinkers and policymakers, between artists and writers and musicians and politicians and the bureaucracy and the government. Let's work together, build a new vision for Pakistan, where equal access to opportunity is not merely a slogan, where all persons are treated with equality before the law, where every individual is free to exercise their rights, pursue liberties, dream big and seek, seek happiness. I look forward to partnering with all of you to build a peaceful, prosperous, and progressive Pakistan. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Bilawal Bhutto Zardai. Moving words indeed. Thank you, everyone.